It is my great pleasure to host uh, the very well known uh, Professor Wolfgang Grisold uh, to World Federation Neurology YouTube channel and World Brain Day page. You all very well know him. He is our Secretary General. Wolfgang, very good uh, day to you. Uh, tell us about uh, your excitement for the upcoming World Brain Day, which is uh, only a few weeks away from now. Yes, thank you, Tisa, and thank you for putting all these efforts into the World Brain Day. Uh, as you say, excitement, and I can say it is an exciting moment because the World Brain Day has given us a specific momentum to enhance the awareness and in the further sense also advocacy on specific diseases. If I just may recall shortly, we have started this movement since we have World Brain Day since 2014. And we started, we have topics as epilepsy, stroke, clean air, uh, Parkinson's disease and migraine. And MS is of particular importance because that's a disease that gets very close to being curable or increasingly curable. And I think that's a good example of hope for many neurological diseases. I think you are spot on. We now in a therapeutic era in neurology, but at the, at, at the same time, uh, given the COVID-19 pandemic that we all are facing right around the, the world, the Im Im importance of neuroinflammation is uh, significantly showcased to the world. How do you want our members, uh, member neurologists from all over the world to join these efforts of promoting brain health uh, through World Brain Day activities and uh, join the camp campaign Stop Multiple Sclerosis? What, how do you like uh, member countries, uh, members to use the material that we created? Uh, what is your message to them? Yes. Well, let's say the material that we created, you created, and the team created is or is full, it's very robust and has been used before. And it should enable a person anywhere in the world to use the material in regard to posters, in regard to social media, and also in template for press releases. This sounds a little bit educational, but it isn't because to write a good press release is important and the template helps to do this. So to answer your question, is, uh, I would say it, we would be very, very happy if our members would take the topic, take the World Brain Day and announce it in their environments, which of course could be completely different from place to place. Uh, by that, they would uh, kind of try to make a press announcement, to make a press conference if this is possible in the COVID times and also release news about this World Brain Day and about the disease and about the possibilities in the media. I think this would be a very good idea. I would also think it's very useful, and I think we had this at previous days, also to include patient groups, and particularly in, in regard to MS, there are many organizations that do patient groups, and I think it would be very wise to involve them in this activity. So you are inviting members to visit the World Brain Day webpage and download the toolbox that we have created. And what you are reminding them is you are happy or the committee is happy for member countries to use World Brain Day material available through World Federation Neurology World Brain Day website and translate them to their own language and use it as if the material that we created belongs to them. Is that correct? A short answer, more than happy. And the intention of these activities and the intention of this toolbox is that people use it, modify it, and use it for the sake of neurology and for the sake of promoting the World Brain Day. Thank you. Any final message to our member societies, member countries, and also to patients and caregivers with multiple sclerosis? Do you have anything to say to them? Yes, I think, first of all, I, I would say, as a, I'm not a specialist in multiple sclerosis, but I admire the worldwide activities in multiple sclerosis. And having, or being, having been watching the development of multiple sclerosis in the past years, and particularly in the, let's say, 
past two decades, it's an eye opener of how uh, theoretical concepts of neuroimmunology of imaging find their ways into patients. And it's uh, incredible to what extent uh, pharmaceutical efforts have enabled us to use these drugs. So this is one thing where I'm very, very impressed. The second point is that the MS societies worldwide have been enabled to use and incorporate patients and patients' organizations. And I would say they are one of the examples of how to do this. And also this impresses me. And I think apart from medications, from drugs, from interventions, human beings need to relate to each other, have to get experience from one another, and also need to discuss so-called soft topics that are very important for the patient or for the carers and may not even be apparent to the treating physician. So an impressive way forward. And I think it's worthwhile to continue on that track. I think you touched upon very useful and key uh, components of uh, the 21st century neurology. One is uh, the therapeutic advances uh, that uh, multiple sclerosis uh, neuroimmunology field has made. And the other important thing is the uh, importance of uh, patient involvement. I think uh, this would uh, uh, this would uh, the this this is a good segue for us to invite our younger uh, generation, uh, the young neurologists, uh, medical students, uh, or even high school students interested in medicine and neurology. Uh, how would you like uh, these younger generations get involved around World Brain Day activities, uh, which will continue from now to October, November, even? Yes, I think it's a very good idea. It is. Uh... I think it depends very much on the structures. And uh, I think what I realized that in many countries of our membership countries, there are structured young neurologists. And I do think we could give out messages to young neurologists to participate in that day and also perhaps bring some ideas of how we can continue this effect of the World Brain Day. And I think likewise, we could also send this message to students, or this, this would be more unspecified. But of course, trainees, residents should be incorporated in that World Brain Day because they are also, let's say, guiding the patients and the advocate for patients in, in, in daily life. It's not only the professors who make the policy. Uh, thank you, Professor Grisold, for your time. I know you are very busy. But despite that, uh, you allocated some time to talk to us, uh, uh, the, to talk about the importance of World Brain Day and important importance of uh, our member societies worldwide and patients, uh, caregivers, uh, young neurologists, uh, students, and any like-minded people, uh, why they should embrace World Brain Day. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity.